All right, guys, this one's a personal one for me. I decided I'd go ahead and put this video out before the final seven episodes of the show air, so I figured I'd release this before my prequel video series. But rest assured, I haven't abandoned that project. I've just postponed it for now, uh, if anyone was wondering. In this video, I want to talk about Supernatural, which has always been one of my favorite shows. Unfortunately, this isn't going to be a positive video about Supernatural, because at this point, I'm starting to really not like it. Season 15 just hasn't been working for me, and it's made me take a look back at the road so far and call into question every writing decision the showrunners have made for the past few years. I'm starting to realize that the last few seasons have been slowly leading up to a pretty mediocre finale, and now I'm going to try to pinpoint where exactly it all went wrong. My greatest hope for this show is that the final episodes will make me change my mind, but I don't think they will. It saddens me to say it, but I think Supernatural has lost its touch. I think my little journey has given me some enlightenment as to what exactly caused the beginning of the end to what used to be my favorite show, and after reflecting on it for a little bit now, I have to admit that this has been a long time coming. I couldn't see it before, but the show has been slowly declining for a while. Actually, I wouldn't say I couldn't see it, just that I found excuses for it. There are actually still plenty of things about the later seasons I'm enjoying, and there are a lot of episodes that, in a vacuum, if you were to isolate them from the rest of the seasons they're in, are definitely some of my favorite on the entire show. To be completely honest, this show is not bad by any stretch. It's certainly nowhere near the level of bad that most other shows on the CW have been suffering from for a while now. I would still watch anything from Supernatural Season 15 over The Flash Seasons 3 through 6 any day of the fucking week. But if I allow myself to look at the show from a more objective standpoint, as someone who hasn't been a loyal member of this fandom for years, I can start to see plenty of holes in the right. Season 15 has been when I really started noticing, but like I said, this has been a long time coming, and the show has been in decline for several years. Now. But before we get into the bad stuff, let me start from the very beginning. Now, I didn't get into Supernatural until about season 10. When the show came on, I was four, and I was definitely too young to be watching a show about monsters and demons and satanic rituals, especially a show as sacrilegious as this one in the Christian household I was raised in. But considering the show has been on for 15 years, having been part of this fandom since season 10 means I've actually been with the show for a third of its runtime, and I think that qualifies me as an older fan. Basically. And I don't mean to sound biased or anything, but right around the time I started watching the show is around the time I personally think it should have ended. The show was supposed to end after season 5, but here we are 10 years later, and I realize now it was probably a mistake to let the show overstay its welcome. I wouldn't even say that the show has become repetitive, because it really hasn't. Most shows that manage to last this long start to become bland imitations of their glory days. They'll reuse plot lines and do just about anything to keep the show going, when in reality they probably should have packed it up and stopped making episodes years ago. But even after 15 seasons, I'll give this show some credit, because it's still able to come up with new plot lines, new characters, and a whole lot of additions to the lore. In fact, I would say the last five years of the show has done a lot more in the way of lore building than even the first five seasons. The problem is, a lot of it is just either really uninteresting or extremely contradictory to the lore established earlier on in the show. And if not that, you'll often find certain additions to the show that retcon other previously established bits of the lore just because the writers want it to be this way now. But they already cemented that it can't be, so they just decide to change it. I'd now like to officially issue my spoiler warning for literally this entire show up to season 15 episode 13, so if you don't want anything spoiled, leave now. An example of a new piece of lore being added that retcons what we came to know before happened at the beginning of season 15. So Sam and Dean learned that their old pal Kevin was actually sent to hell by God because Chuck is actually a dick and has been this whole time. They then learned that Kevin can't go to heaven because he's been to hell and I guess once you're contaminated with demon cooties, you can't make the trip upstairs. Now, of course, any longtime fan of the show will remember that a soul that's been to hell can and has gone to heaven, but then we're given this line to explain it. Our dad made it to heaven after he was in hell. And Bobby Singer. So God made an exception. Didn't he used to like you two? So now Kevin just has to be a ghost forever, I guess. Let me just say, I really don't like how much they use the God card in the last few seasons, and it's especially apparent in season 15. It seems like a really convenient way to undo things that the writers don't want getting in their way by just saying, yeah, well, that stuff happened because God wanted it to, but now he doesn't, so yeah. And actually, come to think of it, if there's a rule that says that no soul that's been to hell can go to heaven, that's clearly well enough known that a run-of-the-mill demon like Belphegor would know about it, then how the hell has Crowley never heard that rule? He seems hellbent on stopping Bobby from getting to heaven, but if this is a rule that he most definitely knows about, he shouldn't be worried at all, right? In the final season particularly, they've completely unraveled several previously established concepts by just saying that God changed the rules again, and it's gotten pretty annoying. They dedicated an entire episode to show us that Sam and Dean are actually just unskilled dumbasses, and the only reason they've been able to do anything this entire show is because God gave them a boost. They make a point to show us that they're not even capable of picking a lock now that Chuck is there 
their enemy, and that just really annoys me. Like, I kind of like the idea that maybe there were some cases where God lent them a helping hand in a pinch. In fact, that's already a thing we've seen happen in past seasons. But to act like every single skill they ever learned how to do was actually God-given is just cheap, and frankly a disservice to their characters. I'm pretty sure their dad taught them how to pick a fucking lock. That's just a thing that humans can do, God or no God. And they also learn how to fight by training and practicing their whole lives. They didn't just wake up one day and know how to do all that because God gave them those abilities like Neo from the fucking Matrix. I kind of liked this episode at first because it made it out like Chuck just cursed them because he's an asshole, and that was yet another obstacle they'd need to bypass in order to ultimately defeat him. It turns out Sam's never even been sick before because Chuck made it so. How neat. The idea in general that God has been manipulating every event on this show in order to tell some grand story is kind of a head-scratcher as well. Like, it's actually a pretty cool concept, but it opens up so many more questions. For example, he doesn't really strike me as the kind of guy who'd risk his own life in order to tell a good story, so you would think that he would have stopped Sam and Dean from unleashing Amara, the one person in the entire universe who can actually kill him. In fact, she almost does. I feel like whether it ruins your little story or not to intervene, you probably should have done something to stop this from happening. The alternative to this discrepancy is that Chuck is actually way more powerful than he lets on, and he's way stronger than his sister. Maybe Amara was just yet another one of his lesser creations, a means to tell a story, and the fact that she's his equally powerful sister is all just a lie that he told the Archangels right before locking her away for billions of years. Of course, if that's the case, that means he's way more powerful than what's been established on the show, and that means he's simply unbeatable. It's an understatement as is to call it a stretch that these guys actually have a chance of beating God himself but given the power levels they've previously established for him, it doesn't seem impossible. With Jack, Billy, and the empty entity on their side, I would honestly say they stand way more than a chance. And even without them, I'm sure Michael will be joining the team before the show's over. And hell, if they can get Amara on board, she can probably stop them all by herself. But if we're now saying that God is actually way more powerful than that, then I'm not sure how they plan to beat him, even with all that combined effort. I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but this is emblematic of why they should never have brought God into the show to begin with. The show was a lot better when he was far away from the conflict. And sure, it made the audience question why he didn't ever intervene with all the shit that was going down, but that's something people in the real world have been asking for thousands of years. We don't need answers for that. We didn't need the whole concept introduced that God is like the super fan who tells all sorts of stories centered around the main characters of the show. Now, like I said earlier, this show has been slowly declining for a while. I honestly think this show should have ended after season 11, and here's why. I like to separate the show into three chapters. Chapter one is the original Supernatural, seasons one through five. Like I said, this show was supposed to end after season five, so this set of seasons is basically the show, and anything that came after is sort of just the aftermath. And I still like the stuff that came after, but obviously seasons 1 through 5 are definitely the most concise with a clear through line. That being said, I personally enjoy chapter 2 better. Chapter 2 is seasons 6 through 11. Season 6 is admittedly really boring, and honestly, there are only a few episodes from it that I actually enjoy and will rewatch, but for the most part, I'm not really a fan. This season was more the show trying to find itself after coming back from the literal end and trying to start a new beginning. But seasons 7 through 11 are personally some of my favorite supernatural content ever. It introduces a lot of great lore and world building, and this kind of stuff is what kept me hooked on the show. The lore of the show is extremely rich, and Chapter 2 focuses heavily on introducing some truly bizarre shit. I really liked how comfortable this show became with doing really wacky stuff and expecting the audience to stay on board. Some of the weirder concepts they introduced post-season 5 are what interests me the most. I like the Leviathan, I like the whole Trials of God plotline in Season 8, and I especially love the Mark of Cain stuff. As soon as the angels were all cast out of heaven by Metatron, this show started becoming exceptional in my opinion. I can't think of a single storyline between seasons 9 through 11 that I don't like, and as you might have expected, forcing God and Lucifer to work together to defeat a common enemy is some of the coolest shit. Season 11 is probably my favorite just because of the last like five episodes. Lucifer! You know, at some point in time you're gonna have to come out and then talk to God. It's like the worst episode of Full House ever. And the reason I think the show should have wrapped up right here is because of just how perfectly season 11 ended. God made peace with his sister, and even with Lucifer. I thought it was really cool that they finally made up after several thousand years of hating each other. It just felt like a good way to end their rivalry, because God killing Lucifer would have been boring and predictable. But what would have been even more boring and predictable was for Lucifer to go back to his evil ways after everything that happened. And that's exactly what he did. 
Thanks, Season 12. At the end of Season 11, Amara even resurrected their mom. And it felt kind of random that of all the people they lost, she would just bring back their mom, who died when Dean was like four, and when Sam wasn't even old enough to ever really know her, but whatever. If the show had just ended right here, I would have just shrugged it off. Happy ending or whatever. They didn't need to wrap up every little thing. There were still a few threads left open, but that would have been totally fine. I wouldn't have been annoyed that Lucifer was still on the loose, or that Billy was still looking to collect Sam and Dean once they died. It's okay to leave some things up to our imagination. Honestly, I sometimes like to pretend that everything after this episode didn't really happen and it's just bad fan fiction. If you cut out the entire British Men of Letters set up in the finale and that part at the end where Sam got kidnapped by fucking Nanny McPhee over here, then you can basically consider this the series finale. Because if you keep on going, you're only going to be disappointed. Then we have chapter 3, seasons 12 through 15. I'll say this now, I actually really like season 13. It's the only one out of these last four that I truly enjoyed from start to finish. It had its share of uninteresting episodes and some really weird ones that I actually liked a lot, just like every other season, but ultimately, it's pretty good. But season 13 is also sort of the worst one when it comes to what I was talking about earlier. It establishes a lot of lore, and a lot of it is pretty interesting, but it also contradicts a few things and has me asking way more questions than I know will ever get answered. Season 13 established the multiverse, and I really like this concept, but but it has me wondering. So, at the beginning of time, God created the universe, and he created four archangels, Lucifer, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, to help lock away Amara so that she wouldn't be able to destroy his creations. But with the establishment of the multiverse, it also establishes that there are multiple versions of each archangel. There are multiple different Michaels and Lucifer, and none of them even know that the multiverse is a thing. The archangels of Earth-1, or whatever, are the ones who seemingly helped God defeat Amara. And I guess all the other universes came after, so those archangels weren't created yet. Now, I'm actually pretty sure there was a line in season 14 that specifically implied that the main universe is actually one of the newest ones because God kept going from one failed draft to another and whatnot, but I'm going to ignore that and instead point out that God literally said nothing about other worlds when the Amara threat was happening. Of course, we didn't know about them at the time, but Chuck did, and he clearly could have used all the help he could get from the alternate archangels across the multiverse. For that matter, he probably could have freed Gabriel from Asmodeus' imprisonment since I'm almost certain he knew Gabriel was still alive and he needed all the help he could get, but he didn't, because the writers hadn't come up with either of these things yet, and so God nearly bites it going up against his sister with almost no credible help. Again, I guess he's just so devoted to keeping his story uncontrived that he's willing to nearly die in order for that to happen, which doesn't fit his villainous persona at all. Not to reiterate points I've already made, but unless they try to say that all the events of season 11 were just another ploy to create a good story and Chuck's life was never in any real danger, then shit just don't make no sense. And I've already explained why that would logistically not work out in season 15 favor, but it would also undermine a lot of the stakes of season 11, which would just break my heart. Also, speaking of Gabriel, I won't pretend I wasn't glad to see him back. He's definitely a favorite among fans, myself included, and Richard Spade Jr. always brings his A-game when playing the iconic trickster. Also, I think the character development he receives in season 13 is really good, and just all in all, I think the whole thing was really well done. Right up until the very end, when they unceremoniously killed him off the exact same way he died the first time, and I couldn't help but wonder what the fucking point was bringing him back and giving him a whole arc just to immediately throw that away and piss off 95% of the fan base. Character assassination is probably one of the worst things to come out of Chapter 3. Lucifer returns to being evil the moment God leaves, causing any interesting potential for his character to be thrown completely out the window for more of the same old thing. See, this show seems hellbent for some reason on trying to prove to us that Lucifer is actually a good guy deep down who was just dealt a bad hand, and then pulling the rug out from under us at the last second. Uh, they pulled this trick multiple times, and I never actually believed it until Season 11. It seemed like like they were finally going to be making a breakthrough with his character, and he might actually change into someone other than your stereotypical villain. And I'm not saying it would have been better if he just completely transitioned into being a good person, but I was really digging the anti-hero vibes he was given off in season 11. And it would have been pretty cool if he sort of became this guy who's technically a good guy, but will still fuck a guy up for bumping into him without saying excuse me. I'm realizing now that I just want every archangel to be Gabriel. Actually, I just... Just, I just want everyone to be Gabriel. After Jack was brought into the show, they made you really think that Lucifer was gonna maybe redeem himself and make his son proud. But anyone who bought that shit for even a second is a fool. And I know this because I was that fool. I still had faith that this show would actually do something interesting with his character, and they were setting it up like he might actually redeem himself for Jack. But turns out, he's actually just still evil, and he only wants Jack for his power. Yay. Wait, if he could just take Jack's power so easily, why didn't he do that before? 
Why would he bother trying to be a dad to Jack if he doesn't actually care about him at all? When Lucifer finally died at the end of season 13, I was so fucking relieved. I was getting so tired of Lucifer plot lines, and I didn't even care how stupid the fight was that killed him. I mean, this was not an even fight at all. Lucifer was fighting with his own power combined with Jack's. He was basically as strong as God here, or at least strong enough to create a new universe, which is no small feat. Michael should never have been able to beat him, not even in his true vessel. Also, the fight looked like shit, so there's that. And of course, they couldn't just leave well enough alone because they gave us another fucking Lucifer plotline in season 14. Though I'll admit, it was pretty interesting. I mean, there's no way that Nick is possibly still alive after all this time, nor is there any way he survived Lucifer's death, but whatever. It was actually not that bad. Except the last episode with Nick, where not only did Nick somehow manage to get the jump on Sam fucking Winchester, I guess God wanted that to happen, but he also almost successfully resurrected Lucifer, which would have made me really fucking mad. And it was also the episode where Mary died in the stupidest way possible, leading to the needless drama that would carry the entire rest of the season. Honestly, season 14 just felt like filler to serve as aftermath for season 13, as well as build up for season 15, and that would be totally fine if season 15 was good, but I'll get to that. Also, speaking of Mary Winchester, let's talk about the worst character on the show since the fucking Ghost Facers, shall we? Most people in this fandom don't really like Mary, and I'm definitely no exception. Ever since she came back, she's consistently made the dumbest decisions, and honestly, the way she treats Sam and Dean is seriously baffling to me. Now, before she died back in the olden days that were the 70s and 80s, we see that Mary wanted to get away from the hunter life to be with John and settle down and start a family. And at no point during that 10 years leading to her death does she ever wish she could go back to that life. She's totally happy living a normal life. But for some reason, once she comes back to life, she immediately decides to go back to being a hunter, and I'm wondering what exactly changed? You could argue that now that her sons have grown up, maybe she feels like she missed the opportunity to be normal, but to me at least, that seems like all the more reason to want to make up for lost time. And I guess if she wanted to go back to hunting because Sam and Dean are both hunters, that would probably make sense, but she just fucking leaves them to go fight with the bad guy who she knows are the bad guys because they were torturing her son the moment she came back to life. It's really dumb that she would ever fight alongside them, even if she believed in their cause. And I suppose I'm being a little unfair, because it's never exactly been that black and white on this show. Oftentimes the main characters will work with their enemies, knowing full well that they can't trust them to achieve some kind of common goal. Of course, that usually goes south for them, and they never really seem to learn from it, but that's neither here nor there. Still though, the British men of letters are an entirely different breed of bad guys. Mary thinks she can trust them because they want to eradicate every single monster in America, but the methods they employ are clearly not the right way of going about doing that. And what's even worse is when she manages to drag Sam on board. Now, there have been multiple cases on the show where Sam and Dean let monsters go because they've come to realize that not all of them are bad, and many of them didn't even choose to be monsters. They were either born to it or were turned by a creature that actually is evil. The way the Brits want to go about wiping out the monsters would have killed all the monsters, even the good ones, and neither Sam nor Mary bats even one eyelash. Hey Sam, Remember Garth? Remember your good friend Garth who became a werewolf and is living a perfectly normal, peaceful life with his werewolf family? You realize they're all going to die if you go along with this plan, right? Sam and Dean have turned their noses up at extreme methods in the past because they refuse to let innocent people die, even if others tell them it's for the greater good. I don't see how this should be any different. And one of the main reasons I don't like Mary is because of the one thing she symbolizes. This is something that has been a problem on the show for a long time, and she's basically the poster girl of the problem. Lack of consequences. Obviously, Sam and Dean have been cheating death for a while now. The beginning of season two was the first time Dean escaped death, and ever since, he's died literally over a hundred times. And I'm not exaggerating, we all remember the episode. But back then, there was a difference. Because you can have your characters come back from the grave while still establishing consequences. Dean was given a second chance at life in 201, but in exchange for that, their dad had to die. At the end of the same season, Sam died, but Dean traded himself for Sam, and it was the entire conflict of season 3 that Sam was trying to save his brother from the consequences of his choices. And at the end of the season, they lose. Dean dies. But like I said, the show has been suffering from a lack of consequences for a long time, and I'd like to pretend that it's just the later seasons that do this, but honestly, consequences stop being a thing at the very beginning of season 4. Sam and Dean spent the entire last season trying and failing to stop Lilith from killing Dean, and at the beginning of the next season, Castiel just brought him back, good as new. Now, I won't pretend that there weren't still permanent consequences after this point, because there were. Joe and Ellen died, and they still haven't come back. The only times we see either of them again are in the episode where the timeline changed, and when Joe is back as a 
ghost for one episode. And Bobby's death in season seven was permanent. I mean, the show keeps finding ways to bring him back once a season so that Jim Beaver can still be on the show. But for all intents and purposes, Bobby is dead. And the lasting consequences of that are there. I'm not saying this was the point where the show dropped any kind of stakes, but as soon as Cass brought Dean back, as soon as he gripped you tight and raised you from perdition, it was clear that no matter how bad the situation became for our main characters, they weren't actually going to die. There's even an episode in season five where Sam and Dean die and go to heaven, and they spend the entire episode running away from the angels so that they can't bring them back to life. Chapter two of the show really only made it worse. Before it was just Sam and Dean who were never in any danger, but then there was Cass. And let me tell you, there's only so many times you can watch your favorite character die and come back a few episodes later before you start to get annoyed. I'll give props to season 12 for at least giving us a permanent death in its finale. Of course, it actually gave us two, but as you'd expect, Cass was alive and well just a few episodes later. Still though, I commend the show for killing off Crowley and sticking with it, even if I really liked Crowley and I was sad to see him go. And let me make one thing perfectly clear. I'm not saying that there are never consequences in the later seasons, but a lot of times, even if something bad does happen as a result of a choice the characters make, it usually doesn't stick. Usually something bad will happen, and that'll last a few episodes, and maybe even half a season, but ultimately, that development gets undone, because the writers don't want to have to write their story without that thing. It leads to the audience feeling frustrated because they know it's all going to be fine, but for the time being, we have to watch the characters go without certain things and wait for them to inevitably get those things back. Oh look, his soul's back. Yeah. But even though I lament the fact that consequences have stopped being a thing on this show for a while now, I still think seasons 12 through 15 have it the worst. And there's one reason in particular for that. That reason is Jack. Now, Jack as a character is fine. Honestly, I've never found myself connecting with him the same way I do with the rest of them, but I don't personally have anything against him. He makes stupid decisions sometimes, and I often have to remind myself that he's literally still a toddler. But the applications involved with his very existence are what I have a problem with. The second they introduced him, I knew right then and there that none of them were ever going to die again. He brought Cass back without even trying. He himself has already died, like, twice, and neither time did they even try to pretend he was gone for good. I mean, obviously they weren't just going to introduce a super powerful character like Jack and imply that he has this great destiny and then kill him off randomly halfway through season 14, but that doesn't negate my point that his very existence makes the stakes feel very low. Oh, and speaking of Jack, the lack of consequences doesn't necessarily only apply to a lack of permanent character death. Jack lost his powers at the end of season 13, and for a good while in season 14, he had to learn to be a regular human. This was a plot line that I actually found to be really interesting. But as I'm sure you already guessed, that didn't stick. He got his powers back like halfway through, and then he defeated Michael with no problem. So, whatever. Fuck me, I guess. Now, despite everything I've said so far, despite all the problems that I've just listed about this show as it stands, I could probably forgive all of it. I mean, I've been making excuses for this show for years, and obviously it's doing something right to keep me hooked for all this time. I could overlook all of it if season 15 was good. Now, again, the final seven episodes have not aired yet, and I'm sure they'll change my opinion of the season and the series overall once I've seen them. But I'm going to try to get this video out before I've seen those episodes, just because I know I'm going to find some way to love these episodes, and and I'm gonna refuse to accept the glaring flaws of the season so far. Or maybe I'll hate them, which I suppose is par for the course for this season. But again, I'm really good at making excuses for some of the more questionable writing on this show, and I doubt I'll come out the end of the series with anything other than a smile on my face, because this show is honestly just something I enjoy, whether it's bad or not. But if I'm gonna analyze the show as a whole, I have to be fair. I can't ignore bad writing just because it doesn't completely ruin the show for me. And even if I could, as it stands right now, I really don't like season 15. And if they go down the direction that it looks like they're going, I don't think I'm gonna like that any better. I've already talked in great length about how none of the god stuff makes any sense this season. Every time they explain something about him, it just seems like another contradiction within a contradiction that we conveniently stash away as just another one of Chuck's lies. They keep on writing themselves out of things by just saying, well, god. And that's obviously not gonna sit well with viewers. But there's some other things about this season that rub me the wrong way. God is not the only thing being mishandled here. First of all, let's talk about death. I don't feel so good. Now I know I'm just beating a dead horse with this one because I haven't met a single person in this fandom that actually likes Billy, but I mean, come on. The original death was so much more interesting and intimidating and I, I just miss him so much. I also didn't really like Billy even when she was just a regular reaper, so points for that. But I don't wanna talk about Billy as a character, more just about death as a concept and the applications being presented to us about him or her or whatever that we've learned over the past few seasons. First of all, we learned that after death dies, the next reaper that dies gets to become the new death, which is probably the stupidest contrivance the show has ever tried to pull, and trust me, there have been a lot. 
I mean, I'm not sure if all the Reapers knew this was the case, but if they did, why the fuck didn't any of them kill themselves long before Billy died? And they never explain why that's the case, but I don't know, I, I guess I can't harp on this show too much for that. Maybe God wanted it, so what the fuck ever. Dude, bad news. You're dead. What? But I'm death! Sorry, dude. Super death. Although we know that's not the case, because from everything this show has established thus far, it seems like death is the one thing God has no dominion over. In fact, this is one of the biggest problems I have with the rules of death at all. See, Billy showed Dean that death has a library full of books that tell every possible way that every single person in the multiverse is gonna die, and even God has one. Apparently, it's the destiny of Sam, Dean, Cass, and Jack to bring about the ultimate destruction of God. The manner of which that they're going to do that is still unknown, obviously, because we haven't seen the end of the show. But honestly, this is a concept that I liked a lot at first. They sort of hinted at it back in season 13, and I kind of liked that. It showed that the writers are still actually trying to build to some sort of conclusion instead of making it all up as they go, because that's what it's felt like a lot these last few years. But it has me wondering, who writes these books? I don't think it was the old death, because the books continuously change even now after his death, and Billy has made it clear she isn't the one writing them. Are they writing themselves? It calls into question the concepts of fate and destiny, something that the show has addressed several times in the past. But the thing is, the entire point of destiny was that it was all a hoax. God created destiny for his stories. It was Sam and Dean's destinies to become the respective vessels of Michael and Lucifer and fight each other to death. These were the destinies that they chose to ignore because they realized it was all a sham. Now, the show has played with the concept before that maybe it was fate all along that the Winchesters fought their destinies and chose each other instead, but even still, it felt like the entire point of the show was always supposed to be that destiny wasn't real. In fact, once Sam and Dean realize that Chuck has been using them as puppets this whole time, they're rebelling from God's plan once again because they want to be free to choose from themselves. It seemed like the ultimate defeat of God at the end of the show would solidify that free will is the true victor. It would showcase that it was all a construct and they tore it down. But now we're being told that destiny, whether that itself is an entity or a concept being controlled by a being even more powerful than God, has willed it so that the Winchesters will win. And I think that defeats the show's entire purpose. I went into this final season excited for them to win because it would mean Sam and Dean were finally free from being controlled all their lives, but I guess that's not true. And now they're opening up so many more questions to add to the flames, but they have so many fires burning already and only seven episodes left to put them all out, and I don't think they're gonna manage it. I mean, Cass still has that deal with the empty entity, and they've barely even addressed that at all. And hey, maybe I shouldn't complain. Maybe Cass will end up being taken to the empty, and that will be his final death. I mean, there are no more seasons after this, so any ending to a character will be final. We know that for sure this time. But even if they all die at the end, it's not gonna feel right. It'll be at the end of the show, so there won't be any time to feel the lasting impact of losing Sam or Dean or both for good. Honestly, it would surprise me a lot more if none of them died at the end of the show, if it finally ended on a happy note. I mean, it's been 15 years, and not one finale has ended well. So, I don't know, that'd be nice to see. There have been a few episodes in this season that I liked, but overall, I am not liking what I've seen. The only thing that even remotely interests me as a plot point this season is Michael. I honestly can't wait to see what they do with his character. Also, slight nitpick here, but look how easily Michael just opened a portal to another world. Remember how the other Michael spent an entire season trying to do that and ended up having to combine his strength with Lucifer to power a really complicated spell in order to do that? Aren't both Michaels supposed to be equally powerful? This is the kind of thing I'm talking about when I say contradictions start to add up. The writers really need to pay more attention to what they establish. The excuse, I guess God wanted it, so it happened, isn't always gonna cut it. It's really cheap. Honestly, it reminds me of how overly reliant Lucasfilm is on shoving the Force in as an explanation for every dumb thing that happens in the new Star Wars movies. Just saying that things happen because it's the will of the Force is not enough to explain any contrivances. And the same goes for Supernatural. Stop playing the God card. Anyway guys, thanks for letting me get all that off my chest. There's a lot more I could say about season 15, but this video is getting to be pretty long, and anything I say might end up just being repetitive. I mean, so far the lack of consequences are still there. Rowena died early in the season and a mere few episodes later we found out she was the queen of hell she just completely took over the place in no time flat Wonderful. I'm not actually sure what the show plans on doing for stakes either. Jack is the one they're setting up to defeat God, and like I already said, this kid's in no real danger. God already killed him, and Billy brought him back like it was nothing. Even if God kills him again, what's to stop her from resurrecting him again? Maybe God could kill Billy? I don't know. 
But even if he did, they would just need to find another reaper to die and become death, wouldn't they? Maybe find some kind of spell to turn one of themselves into a reaper, become death, and then Chuck would be right back to square one, wouldn't he? In fact, I don't think God is even powerful enough to kill death. It's been implied multiple times on this show that death is probably as strong as, if not stronger than God. And regardless, her and Jack combined should be more than enough to beat him. That's without the help of the empty entity and probably Michael too. Even assuming Amara ends up siding with Chuck, they definitely don't stand a chance against all of them. And I, I don't know, can't Billy wake up all the other dead archangels too? I'm sure Gabriel would have no problem helping defeat his dad. At this point I'm spiraling, and I know I am, so I'm gonna stop. It's just really hard not thinking about all this because there are so many routes this season could take, and it doesn't look like any of them will be good. And again, I really hope I'm wrong about that, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Hi right, guys, time to plug. I mentioned all the way at the beginning of this video my prequel project, and it occurs to me that a lot of you probably don't know what that is. Uh, for anyone wondering, I'm planning to do a three-part full-scale rewrite of the Star Wars prequel trilogy, and more details will be covered in the first video of that series when it finally drops. It should be my next video, but these things take a long time to make, so just be patient with me. Also, I want to shout out the channel Super Sith Bros. It's a gaming channel I run with Darth Porgus where as you might expect from a gaming channel, we play games. Video games. Mostly just him though. I'm I'm bad at games. But I provide the comic relief because believe it or not, I'm actually funny sometimes. I'm gonna link what I consider to be our best video ever released in which we play Mario Maker and Logan beats the world record on a Ross Donovan level. It's a bit on the long side, but I assume if you're still watching this video, you're okay with that sort of thing. And I want it known that that's the kind of quality video to expect from that channel in the future. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you all on the other side. Yeah, that was kind of neat. Maybe I can say that as my outro every time. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't cool. Got it. Okay. Well, bye guys. Lucifer was fighting with his own power combined with Jack's. Ah, oh, fucked it up at the